In this video, I'm going to go over how to align images in Metashape using two different chunks, creating masks, and then aligning the two chunks together. I have my images in a folder on the desktop, and I'm just going to drag them into my photos. I have 61 images in total, about 30 for one side and 31 for the other. It's just a loaf of bread, top and bottom. I'm going to select either all the top images or the bottom images, doesn't really matter, and move them to a new chunk. So I'm going to right click on them, move images, chunks, or a new chunk, and hit yes. So now I pretty much just have two groups, chunk one of the top, chunk two of the bottom. Doesn't matter which one you start with, I'm going to go to workflow, align photos, I'm going to do medium because I don't have that many images, and hit OK. All the other default settings are just fine. It should go relatively quick because I only have 30 pictures. And here we go. It's going to look like a blob. I'm going to turn on my cameras. And this is where my pictures should be. I did forget to take a couple images right there, but that's all right. I don't have to do too much cleanup to this. However, if I leave my bounding box like this uh, with a lot of room on the bottom, Metashape is going to fill in a lot of that space with some random geometry. So if I leave it how it is right now, go to Build Mesh, it's going to flare out a bit, which I really don't want. So instead, I'm going to resize my region and drag it up a little bit and just cut a little bit of the bottom off. I don't want to cut too much because I do need enough overlap with the uh, other images to fully align them. But if I cut off just a little bit of the bottom, it will be fine. You don't really have to worry about these points. They are oops, outside of the bounding box, so they're going to be ignored. But I'm still just going to delete them. And now I'm going to go back to build mesh. When I'm making masks, I do uh, source data from tie points. It's a lot faster than depth maps. And I don't need a nice model. I just need the right shape. And if you don't see your model, if it's still stuck on your point cloud, go to the little pyramid drop down and go down to model solid. And this is pretty close to what I want. It is flaring out a little bit on the bottom, but it should be fine. I need to import masks, or I need to create masks, and it's called importing them. So I'm going to right click on my chunk one, go down to import and mask. By default, it will be from alpha, assuming the image already has a mask, which we don't have. So I'm going to go to from model. So it's going to create a mask from the model that I just generated, and I'll hit OK. You can check your masks by hitting this mask button on your photos. It should be the same icon as Photoshop. Or if you double click on a picture, it will have a little line around showing your mask. I'm going to do the exact same process for my chunk 2. Align photos, medium, hit OK. And it's going to be the exact same process that I just did. I'm going to resize it, making it a little bit smaller. Going to rotate it just a little bit. And it's looking good. I should have taken more pictures of this side, uh, some higher ones aiming down, but it will work. However, I don't believe the tie point will work. I'm going to build a tie point real quick. And it worked, but it just didn't have enough data on the top to fill in that area. So instead of doing tie points, I'm going to change my source data to depth maps and change it to low and low. It'll take a little bit longer, but they do give you a nicer model. 
and it should fill in that gap. All right, so it just finished, and as you can see, it did fill it in. It's a little bit lower resolution, but it has the correct shape. And I'm going to right-click Import Masks from Model, and I can view my masks. There is an Align and Merge Chunk option under the workflow. I kind of have mixed results with this, so I'm not going to use it. I'm just going to select all of my images. I'm in chunk 2. We can go 2 to 1 or 1 to 2, doesn't matter. And I'm going to move these images back into chunk 1. So I'm going to right click, move images, chunks, chunk 1, hit yes. So now I have all of my images in the same uh, group, the same chunk. And what this allows me to do is go back to workflow and align images. And I need to open up the advanced tab and change my apply masks to none and change it to key points. If it's set to none, it's not going to use the masks and you probably won't have a very good image alignment. So I want to use those masks and then I can hit OK. I'm still on accuracy of medium. It'll take a little bit longer because there's 61 images instead of 30. But it should go relatively quick. And I'm going to turn on my cameras. I can see that my camera position looks good. I have images on the top and on the bottom. My model did not update because I have not built a mesh yet. But if I turn on my point cloud, show the tie points, I can see that I have a full loaf of bread. Let me go to workflow and build mesh. This is where I'm going to use depth maps. And I'm going to go high and high and pause the video for a bit. It'll probably take like five or 10 minutes and hit OK. And yes, I want to get rid of the old model, because the old tie point model. It's actually going pretty quick. And building the model just finished, so I'm going to change this to model solid, and I have a pretty nice looking model of my loaf of bread. I'm going to turn off the cameras, and next step I'm going to go to workflow, build texture. I want to build a diffuse map, from the images. I'm just going to do a 4K texture. All the defaults are good. And hit OK. And it's going to give it some automatic UVs that won't be great, but they will work uh, quite well for what Metashape is doing. And once that's done, we will export, go into Maya to make a low poly, and then transfer the color map to our um, from our high poly to our low poly. And again, if you don't see your color texture, go down to that pyramid and go down to Model Textured. And I should have taken more pictures of the bottom. It's a little bit blurry, but that's all right. It will be good for what I'm trying to do. I'm going to right-click on Chunk 1, go down to Export Model. I have a folder called Bread. Make a new folder called Demo. Or Demo. There we go. And I'm going to call this bread raw, so I know it's the raw model. I haven't done anything to it. Save, and I want to export texture, and I'm going to turn off vertex colors if it's turned on. Uh, if you didn't make them in the build mesh, you can't turn it on or off, but if you have the option, turn it off. And a JPEG is fine. Next, I am going to open up Maya and go to File Import. And find my OBJ file. It'll import somewhere in the Maya scene. It'll be random. Generally, you want to be careful about moving your pivot point and losing uh, where it originally came in. Uh, because you would go back into Metashape with your model to build the texture. However, I'm not going to bring my low poly back into Metashape. I'm just going to bring it into Substance Designer so I can uh, bake the color map. So all I want to do is get a low poly version of my model. Damn. 
and I'm going to use the quad jaw tool. So I'm going to select it, go up to my magnets, and the far right one is make selected objects live, no longer selectable, and I can get into the quad draw on the bottom right with the modeling toolkit or shift right click, I have quad draw. Now this generally just allows you to add um, vertices, so if I just left click, I can add vertices, hold down shift, create a face, and hold down tab to extrude. Sometimes it takes a moment the first time you do that. If you hold uh, tab and left click, if you tab and middle click, it'll extrude that entire uh, ring or the entire side of edges. However, I'm going to, instead of using the quad draw from the very start, I'm going to get out of live mode just for a moment. I'm going to make a cube. And I'm going to make a bounding box around my loaf of bread. And I want it to be just a little bit bigger than the actual model. Go to the multi cut and just subdivide it a couple times in each direction. And maybe one. Yeah, one more. Why not? And then I'm going to get back into live mode. Select my bounding box and go into quad draw. And this allows me to hold, uh, use the relax tool. And if I hold down shift, I can left click and my low poly is going to snap to my high poly. And it'll be very rough because it'll be a little bit smaller than what it should be. But it will be a really good start for what I want to do. There's a couple things you can do. If I'm, I got out of the quad draw tool, I still have my model live. And I can scale, uh, just double click on the model, my low poly. Scale the UVs up, it'll adhere to the model a little bit better. But instead, let me isolate. Um, I'm going to go into object mode and go to edit mesh and add divisions. That just gives me some more polygons to work with. I can get back into quad draw. And even though I can't see my model, I'm still in live mode and it will still work. So I can hold down shift and left click and relax my model. I can also hit B to turn on soft select. I'm going to make that brush a little bit smaller. There we go and then I can relax multiple vertices at the same time. In areas that I see that might need some more geometry, maybe all along here, if I hold down control when I'm in the quad draw tool, it will give me a new edge loop going all the way around. Maybe have one down here as well. And when you're pretty happy with what you have, I'm going to turn off live mode just so I can move this, see what I have. I have a pretty similar looking shape. I am going to go to my soften edge, which is shift right click, soften edge, or mesh display, soften edge. And I have the right shape. Obviously a lot less detail, it's 264 faces instead of 2 million. And now I need to UV this. And one of the nice things about starting with a cube for my bounding box is all I have to do is select my UV shell and unfold it, hit fix, and I'll have some decent UVs. I do like to cut off these little tabs here and here, and then just sew them so it has um, a little bit more of it uh, combined so that UV seems a little bit smaller. And then just make sure that it's not going outside of the 0 to 1 space. And my low poly is done. I'm going to drag it back. I just held down X when I moved it away. Now it's back in the center. And I'm going to export my low and my high poly. And it, since I moved my high poly, I need to move or re-export it so it's in the correct position. Um, so let me figure out where I am. There we go. And I'm going to export it as an FBX file. This will be my bread flow. And I'm going to export my bread high. This one will take a little bit longer because it's a lot more. 
And our next step is in Designer. I'm going to create a new substance graph, and it's going to be an empty graph. We don't actually need any nodes, and I'm going to hit OK. And I need to find my models. Oh, text. All right, so I have my low poly, red low, red high, and my texture, which is, I called it bread raw. It's the JPEG file. I'm going to select all three of them, left click and hold, and drag them to unsaved package. And it'll say link in the bottom right corner. And then I'm going to hit link resources. There we go. So I have my low, high, and my texture. I'm going to right click on bread low and go to bake model information. Come over here. That a little bit smaller. And I want to add my high definition model. So I'll click on this. Choose from resources, bread high. Come down here to add baker. And you can do a lot of baking in designer. I'm just going to do my transferred texture from mesh. All the other bakes I'm going to do in uh, painter. I'm going to change this to 4K since my original texture was 4K. A PNG is fine. When you add transferred texture, you have a new option over here under baker parameters on the right called texture file. I'm going to click on the three dots and choose from resource and I have my bread raw JPEG. Next on the very top where it says output I want to select a folder it'll go to documents Adobe designer I'm going to bring that on my desktop demo and select folder. Now if I hit start render right now it will work but it might miss some of the information as you can see, there are some um, holes, some splotches around it. And this is because my max frontal and rear value are not turned up enough. And unlike Painter, it doesn't give you the nice uh, 3D visual of what is too far or not far enough. You just have to guess, uh, bring your frontal and rear value up. And I'm going to hit Start Render again. And about halfway, a little bit less, seemed to work quite well. And we transferred our pretty terrible UVs that we had on the high poly to our low poly that has nice UVs. And it's already been saved. It'll be in that same folder. And it is just called bread low transfer texture from mesh. Now that we have this, I'm going to open up Substance Painter. A lot of software hopping, but it's a pretty nice process once you have it down. I'm going to go to a new project, and I'm going to open up my low poly, not my high poly. 4K is fine, I'm going to hit OK. If you're on a slower computer, you might want to do that part of the new project in 2K. And I also want to bring in my uh, correct texture, the bread low transfer texture from mesh. I'm going to drag that into my library. I'm going to define it as a texture, and down here I want to import it to current session because it will self-delete when I close Painter, and I don't need Painter to load this bread texture every time I open it. I'm going to hit import. Here it is. I'm going to make a new fill layer. I'm going to call it diffuse. Come down here and just drag my texture to base color, and I'm going to bring my roughness all the way up to white. So now I have a nice looking loaf of bread. However, we can make it look nicer doing some baking. So I'm going to hit F8 or hit the croissant on the top to open the baking menu. I'm going to find my high definition mesh, which is bread high. And wherever it's red, that means that area is going to be left out of the bake. So I can bring my max frontal distance up. I'm going to turn off ID because I don't have an ID. I'll turn on height. I don't actually need all of these, but it's going to do it. 
4K, and I'm gonna do some anti-aliasing, and then hit bake. And then we will have our high poly uh, transferred to our low poly through texture information. All right, so I'm gonna to return to painting mode, and it'll just look a little bit better. If I turn off that diffuse, we can see that we have a lot of that detail on our texture map. Uh, sometimes I like to search my library for height, make another layer, and turn off everything except for the height channel, and add my height texture here. And this gives you a little bit of an extra uh, bit of detail. You can do something similar with ambient occlusion. Going to turn off everything except for color. Drag it to base color and then change my layer blending from normal to multiply. There it is. And it just gives you a little bit more shadowing. Some areas that might look a little bit too dark. Uh, you can always make a mask and just kind of paint out some of the areas that might be a little bit too much. And I now have a pretty low poly loaf of bread with a very nice 4K texture. And I could export it for any uh, software that I want.